Hi guys, it's Claire's and welcome to another video tutorial with me. Today's class, we are going to be learning how to do Gerbera daisies. So hope you guys are excited. If you are new to my channel, please know that I do regular watercolor of the floral nature mostly on a weekly basis. So make sure you hit that like and subscribe button so you get notified of future videos. Uh, okay, so just to give you a quick heads up on the materials we are using, which are all listed below in the description, so please feel free to check that out. Uh, here we go. We have the Filbert number no. 6 by Princeton Velvet Touch, um, the Zen Art number no. 2 Rigger from their Black Tulip collection, and then the Silver Black Velvet number no. 4. I've got two little bowls of water ready, and then I have my 36, um, 36 set, yes, by White Knights, a uh, set of 36 colors by White Knights, that's how I should say it, which I absolutely love. I had the 24 set before, but these additional um, blues, purples, and reds are an absolute game changer for me. So, hope you guys are excited, and we are ready to begin painting some pretty Gerbera daisies. For the sake of this video, because you need to see the details and whatnot, I've just zoomed in onto my sheet so you can see me draw that on here. And uh, yes, once we are done, I'll kind of zoom out so then you can have a better view of it. Okay, so to start off, we are going to start off by creating a little dotted line, sorry, circle around, and that's typically going to be um, the color of the, fl the flower and then just outside of the actual center. So we're not doing a brown, we're gonna pick the, let's, let's pick the English red. So I'm picking an English red, and let me just show you guys that color. The English red is right here. And so that's what I'm picking for my actual center. And I'm just mixing that off to the side. And once I have it mixed, I'm gonna go ahead and start doing my little circle that I mentioned. So I'm just going around and I'm creating these little dotted slash lines in a circular manner. And trying to leave like some white space in between. And you can see it's very like haphazard and yeah. And then I'm gonna do like a little dotted line almost just on the outskirts of this. Very loosely, perfect. Now once I have this, I'm going to use my velvet um, filbert brush by uh, Princeton. And we are going to go ahead and mix some color and start creating our petals. So for this color, I am using the Titan Red, which is like a slightly brighter orange. And the consistency should be like a 70-30 um, happening. So once we have that mixed, we're gonna start from the outside in for the petals. So from the outside, I'm coming down in just like that. Make sure you've got a good amount of color. What I'm doing is I'm going to alternate or try and place them in areas where there's space in between um, because what I'm going to do is go in with a slightly different variation of this color and this is how we get that nice mix. So I'm trying to do this as quickly as I can without giving too much detail here and all I'm doing is using the tip pressing down trailing off and then just adding using the side of the brush to kind of create that one additional line now as we're going along you can totally go ahead get some of the golden um, orange as well and just kind of go ahead and create additional petals just like that in between and this kind of helps us get a blend of color between the petals as you can see right there and this helps with giving it a nice loose look with a lot of pretty flowing watercolors happening. So I'm just going to finish these and then 
using the rest of my paint to make some of the golden in it. I'm just going to go ahead and create these petals the exact same manner in between. And then just one over here. And then one more here. So there you go. We've got our little Gerbera, right? Um, one more thing that I want to do while this is still kind of semi-damp is I'm going to use my number four and I'm going to get some of the sepia. I have some sepia and we're going to use that for the center. So I'm mixing some sepia off to the side and I'm just going to dab this right here. But I'm leaving a little bit of white space between the sepia and this uh, what was it? The Titan Red that we had done. And I'm just doing this dotted bit all around, maybe even leaving some white space in between. So just like pointillism, really. You're just kind of dot, 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 dot. And there we go. Perfect. We're leaving it at that. And then I'm going to go back, wash off my brush, and using whatever's left over on here, like water that is, so just make sure you don't have too much water piling up. I'm just going to go in here and just pull a little bit of the dark color that we have and just add some linear lines into these petals. And this is what really gives it that beautiful detail, kind of really making it stand out and look like a Gerbera daisy. So I'm just doing this all around. Notice I'm just taking a tiny bit of that color and kind of swishing it around. I don't want this to be looking like black lines. I want it to just look like a darker version or shadowy effect happening in the petal itself. And if you feel like you're getting too much of a dark line, it's probably because you're taking too much color you just need to make sure you're getting just a little bit of color and you're kind of spreading it on. And there we go. And for the in-between, you can just go very lightly and just add some detail in between just like that. So it looks like it is coming from behind. Areas where they're damp, you'll get some nice, beautiful mixing effects. But yes, essentially this is how it should look. Now, one last thing is I would say if you want to add some additional little petals in between, you totally can. I would just recommend really watering down your filbert and then going in and I'm just kind of watering it down off to the side and then going in and kind of just adding a couple of cute little Lucy strands or waves of color as I would like to call them and filling it up if you want or you can leave it as is it's entirely up to you and now you can go ahead and create this in different colors now color is everything guys so I would recommend um, testing a couple of colors before you do a bunch of these together especially if you're doing it for a card or something like that and um, yeah that's it. You're, this is typically how I would do the Gerbera Daisy. So that was it for the Gerbera Daisy, but if you want to add some cute little strands of greenery around it, I'm not using the typical Gerbera Daisy uh, leaves, but I like these cute little, almost kind of like wildflower tendrils all, of, all along. I have some premixed green. Ideally, I believe this is like... Uh, the chromium oxide which is part of the 36 set white nights that i'm currently using uh, so i'm just using some of that and using the rigor because the rigor gives me some really great um what's the word i'm looking for loose tendril type organic detail so you can just kind of have it running in between and look at these thin little lines that I get for leaves, which I love the rigor for. And this is part of the 
the Zen Art Supplies um, Black Tulip variety or set. Uh, again, the a link is in the description if you like to check that out. So this is typically how I would do these little tendril type details and just add some greenery all around to kind of enhance this and make it a pretty pattern. So very simple, I'm just using the tip, pressing down and kind of trailing off and giving it some movement almost. But notice I'm also leaving like white space in between. Um, in between the the leaves that is so again going off in this little tendril kind of manner tendril manner you guys know what I mean yeah so that's how I would enhance um, these florals just adding a little bit of green just one color is fine doesn't have to be too detailed especially if you're gonna make it something bright and colorful like this where we're using like purples and oranges and pinks and reds so keep the green less vibrant so that the colors pop and that's it so hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know in the comments what you thought and uh, I would love to see your work so please feel free to tag me on Instagram or Facebook my handle on Instagram is hello Clarice G and as per usual, if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel. And please consider sharing this video with others who might enjoy this as well. It really does help my channel grow, guys. So thanks so much for watching. And I am looking forward to seeing all those tags rolling in on social media and seeing your beautiful work.